Hey all, welcome back to another episode of Car Topics Explained. Sorry for the long wait since the last episode, midterms and all that, couldn't find any time. You probably know how it is. But anyways, today I'm back and we are going to be talking about Brian's 2002 Nissan Skyline GTR from Fast and Furious, the fourth movie. And let's just get right into it. The first thing you should know is that none of the cars used in the fourth movie were actual GTRs. They were all GTT ER34 models, and some weren't even turbocharged. There are two big benefits to not using real GTRs. The first is, using non-GTR Skylines is cheaper, and also, you don't feel quite so guilty when you damage or completely wreck them. And, because they were already rear-wheel drive, they didn't have to remove the front drive shaft, which made it easier for the stunt drivers to do burnouts and slides. In fact, that is actually what they did to the cars in Too Fast, Too Furious. They removed the front drive shafts so that the real GTRs they used would slide around like rear-wheel drive cars. And I'm just going to settle this right now. All of the Skylines used in Too Fast, Too Furious are real GTRs. And the Skylines you see in Fast and Furious, the fourth movie, are GTTs. Converted to look like GTRs. I repeat, converted to look like them. They were not real GTRs. Do not believe any other information. That, that is just, that is the truth. That is fact. It, that's how it is. The cars used in Fast and Furious were actually Kaizo cars. Kaizo Industries was a company that imported cars that couldn't be made federally legal to drive on U.S. roads. Their method of trying to get away with it was to take apart the cars and separate as many of the parts as possible and import them, reassemble them, and register them as kit cars. And that didn't turn out well. Because, in the end, Kevlar wearing immigration and customs enforcement agents came after Kaizo and the owners of the cars and took them. Can you imagine that? Guys in Kevlar coming after you and your car? And there's the high probability of getting hefty fines or even jail time if you're caught with one of these cars or involved with importing them illegally. It just doesn't work. Don't do it. Public service announcement. Don't do it. It's not worth it, and you end up getting nice cars crushed in the process, which just makes you look like a, an idiot. But it's interesting how that works, isn't it? But before I succumb to the urge to rant about the U.S. and their car laws, let's move on to the mods on the Fast and Furious Skyline. So there's a whole bunch of different stories about what this car actually had equipped. But... Usually, in the Fast and the Furious movies, there's at least one car that is called a hero car. This car is often the most heavily modified when it comes to not just exterior and interior parts, but also performance parts as well. Stunt cars are usually just visually modified to save money, and the hero cars are used for close-ups, engine bay shots, and anything where the car isn't at extreme risk of being damaged. So I figured I'd see if there's any info at all regarding the hero skyline, from the movie. And I can't find any complete parts lists, so I'm going to do my best with what I can confirm. The exterior of the car has parts from what appear to be the East Bear body kit. What's interesting though is that the car has the front bumper, side skirts, and rear bumper, but it doesn't have the the Nismo style rear bumper add-on pieces, so it looks like a stock GTR bumper. The hood is also an East Bear part as well. And I'd like to just confess that it was a lot more difficult for me to find these parts than it should have been. But the reason why it took me a little longer to find them than I thought it would is because I was only looking at GTR parts, aka parts for the BNR34 chassis. All of the cars in the movie used ER34 chassis. And thus, of course, they had only ER34 parts. So just bear that in mind, all of the East Bear parts, you know, front bumper, side skirt, rear bumper, and the hood as well, are all just for the ER34. Moving on though, the car also obviously has a GTR wing, and the wheels are Ray's Volk RE30s, and perhaps even more obviously, the car was painted in Bayside Blue. As for the interior, what I can see is that it has OMP Italy street tuning seats, a Matt Sweeney roll cage, a Magden M1 performance computer, 
a blue OMP Neptune shift knob, and a Momo steering wheel that looks like a Momo Mod 80. As for performance, the car apparently had an RB26 swapped into it. I'm guessing only the Hero car had this for engine bay shots. It is also supposed to have a Rotora brake system and a K&N air filter. Along with that, it's also got Continental Sport Contact 2 tires. But beyond that, there isn't much else known about the car, performance-wise. Heck, I don't even know what exhaust system was used on it. Um, but you can see Turbonetics on the intercooler, so perhaps you could say the film is implying, it might not actually be the case in real life, but it could be implying it has Turbonetics, you know, parts under the hood, so maybe a, an interesting turbocharger from them. But I'm just going to say, probably not. And heck, I don't even know if it's, it's, it's probably twin turbocharged, because that's probably cheaper, probably has the stock turbos. But I don't know what turbos it has, I don't know if it's single, I don't know what, you know, I know nothing about that. I don't know if it has special internals, I don't know if it has cool cams, interesting pistons, a stroker kit. Absolutely no idea. But hey, moving on. Here are a couple of weird facts about how they went about portraying the skyline in the film. For off-roading scenes, they used a buggy with a fiberglass R34 shell on top of it. And in the scene where Brian is looking at the Skyline GTR, the R35, and the GTT at the FBI headquarters, and says, I want them all. And apparently, we're supposed to believe the GTT has an R35 engine in it. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, and I'm not sure if that's really canon. But if it is, and you don't believe it, don't worry. I don't totally get it either, especially since there's a shot in the movie where Brian appears to be done building his car, and we see what looks like an RB26 from a Skyline GTR, rather than a VR38 from an R35. But, if you want to see how swapping a VR38 into an R34 GTR would actually work, check out Moto Video's series showing just that. 1320 Video also did a showcase on it as well. And in my opinion, it's probably the best sounding VR38 I've ever heard. And truth be told, I don't really like the sound of the R35's engine. Without ridiculous modifications. But anyways, I'm afraid that's all I can really tell you about this car. I wish I could tell you more, but the whole thing is so obscure and there's just no confirmed or credible information anywhere. But, I'm pretty certain the information I've presented to you in this video is the most recent and reliable. That said, if you do know something I haven't covered or isn't well known, let us know in the comments. But alas, as I said, I have nothing else to report about Brian's second skyline, so I shall be signing out. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope this video gave you at least some of what you are looking for, and maybe, hopefully, you found it entertaining. But hey, I've made lots of other videos like this one. You can use the link in the description to look at the whole Car Topics Explained playlist. I talk about importing R34 GTRs, building the Too Fast Too Furious Skyline, race cars, and so much more. On top of that, I also do gaming videos, vlogs, videos where I just drive around and ramble. Could be good if you like the sound of my voice. I also recently started a series that documents my adventures with modifying cars. And last but not least, I also do car reviews. So, if any of that tickles your fancy, then maybe have a peruse through my channel. And if you're extra cool, maybe even hit that subscribe button. But that's enough shameless self-promotion for me, so I'm going to sign out. I, the Racing Joker, will see you all next time. Stay crazy, everybody.